morning. How are you guys? We have some people that are at a funeral this morning and we pray for them. I just want to open up in prayer. Um, bow your heads. Lord, please bless this Oasis Christian Fellowship Church. Please allow me to speak your word and your word. Please give me the strength and the guide. Guide me, Lord, in everything that I do, not only here at this particular time, but also in my life, where I can be a good, humble servant to preach your word, your gospel. In Jesus' name, I bow on one knee, my Lord and Savior. Today we're going to be talking about false prophets and false teachers. And I want to get your phones or whatever device that you have or a Bible and we're going to dive into our first dive into Matthew 23 in the New Testament. Matthew 23. We're going to start off in the first verse, but in the sub-topic it's Jesus warns against the religious leaders. And if you look, whatever device you're looking at, if you look at it, Jesus is talking, and it's in red. First verse, Matthew 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law, and, and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats at the synagogues. They love to be greeted in the marketplace and to have men call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi for you have only one master and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant, for whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. Woe to, you blind, woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift on it, 
he is bound by his oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift of the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And he who swears by the temple swears by it and by one who dwells in it. And he who swears by he heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. Uh, this is Jesus saying this to the Sanhedrin on his day. Let me explain a little bit about 23, and I'm just going to go over the application process of it. The Pharisees' traditions in their interpretations and applications of the laws had come as important to them as God's law itself. Their laws... Their laws were not all bad. Some were beneficial even. The problem arose when the religious leaders, three points I want to make. One, took man-made rules as seriously as God's laws. Okay? Two, told the people to obey these rules, but did not do it themselves. And three, obey the rules not to honor God, but to make themselves look good. Usually, Jesus did not condemn what the Pharisees taught, but what they were was hypocrites. Okay, let me stop there. And that was the verse, verses 2 and 3 of Matthew 23. Now, fast forward to 2021. Okay, what are we faced with right now? Now listen, maybe some of you are not going to agree with me, but I have testimonials, right? This true fact, okay? Joel Osteen is a false teacher. He's a false prophet. He preaches to 45,000 people on a Sunday. And he preaches prosperity. It has nothing to do with the gospel of Christ. He doesn't preach what God intended the gospel to be preached. And I would be very, very, very terrified to preach a gospel that is not in the word of the scriptures, but in a word that he's making up in prosperity. His doctrine is a doctrine of you will have a lot of money. All you have to do is ask for it. Where does that say in Scripture? Another one, Joyce Meyer. She is an apostate. She preaches that God is not one and the same as Jesus. Here in the Christian doctrine, we believe in the Trinity. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the Trinity, we believe. It's not a mode of aspects. It's not mandalism. That, oh, it's three modes, and we only believe in one God. We believe in one God. But in a trinity, she also preaches prosperity. That's false teaching. That's false teaching. Another one is Gravello. Gravello preaches prosperity as well. If you look on YouTube, 
People are throwing $20 bills at the altar. That's blasphemy. Your TV evangelist, like Kenneth Copeland, who claims that he's a pastor, is the same way as well. They don't preach the true gospel. And if I don't stand on the wall and preach the correct material, like we went over in Matthew 23, that I'm responsible. You see, everyone in this room is going to die. And everyone's going to answer for everything that they did on this side of eternity. You know what's different between me and you? And the rest of the people that I mentioned? We're going to be judged in a higher level. And if I don't get this right, and if I get this wrong, it's a bad deal for me. It really truly is. If I don't preach the scripture on what's real. Now listen, why am I bringing this up? Well, Jesus said it. He said, beware of the fall of false prophets and false teachers. Because the three people I four people I mentioned this, this morning, they want to tickle your ears. They want to tickle you. Oh, it's, listen, Jesus is love. And that's all they want to stand on. Now listen, do I believe Jesus is love? Do you? Of course. Jesus is love. Right? And his John 3, 16, he died for our sins. He gave his only son. He gave his only son. He gave it to us. And thank God that he did. Thank you, Lord. Amen? However, the Lord God will not condone a sinful nature. Now, let me tell you this. You go to any church around here, maybe not some, not the ones that I'm affiliated with, Central Christian over there at Pastor Kevin, now Pastor Kimmy coming up, right? We're a starter church. Very few people in this church. And that's fine with me until we get bigger. That's up to the Lord, actually. But let me tell you something real quick. One of the most things that gets me the most is when they do an altar call and you need to pray a sinner's prayer and all of a sudden, you're good. It doesn't work like that. If I call up Michael and I say, Michael, you want to give your life to Christ? Yes, I do, Pastor John. Great. Say this prayer. We'll recite it together. I'll put it on the, the TV. And after you say that, bam, you're in the will of God. That's not how it works. Show me in the Bible that the sinner's prayer says that. It doesn't. It doesn't. What Jesus says that you enter the kingdom by grace and by faith alone. By grace and by faith alone. However, there has to be a conversion in your life. You cannot say a sinner's prayer on Sunday or Saturday and all of a sudden everything's good. And then Monday, go back to your sinful nature. Watch all the Hollywood shows you want. Condone the sex. Condone your swearing. Just run around with an evil. Because all of you here today are professed Christians, are you not? Is it good enough? Is it good enough? Ever since the fall of man in Genesis 3, when Eve took the fruit, then Adam took the fruit, we're a fallen humanity. Everyone that is born in this world has a sinful nature. That means we have an evil heart. We gravitate to evil. We gravitate to evil. That's it. That's why we need God. That's why we need Jesus. And thank God He came. Amen? Now listen. You might not like what I say today. and That's fine. Because I'm going to answer to Him and only Him. Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, and so on, they're an apostate. 
They preach prosperity. And that's not what God wants us. He wants us to know the word. And I want to warn you about that. Okay? We're going to move on to 2 Peter 2. I'll wait until you get there. 2 Peter 2. Are you there? Okay. Are you there? Second Peter 2, subtitle, Danger to Growing Christians, False Teachers and Their Destructions. Verse verse. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord. Who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of the truth into dis in disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the filthy lives of lawless men, for the righteous man living among them day after day was, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous to the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of a sinful nature and, des and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid of slander, celestial beings. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not slanderous accusations against such beings in the presence of the Lord. But these men blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like root beasts, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed. And like beasts, they too will perish. I'll stop there. I don't know about you, but if you follow me along, that's really serious, serious business. When Jesus walked the planet, he talked about the false teachers at, in his time. He talked about false prophets. He talked about the Sanhedrin at the time. Okay? It's happening right now. It's happening today. Now, why are, why are we... Why are we concerned about it? Because just like a wolf in sheep's clothing, I'm going to tell you. Now, I know I've stood here before with many of you, and I've told you that if you read the Word, if you read this, the Bible, and you, and you immerse yourself in the Word, and all I ask of everyone here is to read a little every single day before work. How about when, how about when you turn off that light? Instead of watching TV, and letting the TV watch you, why don't you read the Word? Because guess what? 
That's why there's false teachers, even back in Jesus' time and now, because people are ignorant of the Word. They're ignorant of God's Word, because if they read God's Word, they would have a blueprint on what to follow, what to believe, and what not to believe. That's the key, the Word. Now the preachers that I'm talking about, Joyce Myers is 66 million dollars strong. What does it say about that? Well, the word tells me that a rich man, plural, that means women too, can't even get through an eye of a needle, a camel. Now, if I had a needle and I had a camel in front of me, and I would say, hey camel, jump through the eye of the needle. But Jesus said in a parable, he said that that's impossible to do. Yet, everybody wants to be like Joyce Meyer. Everybody wants to be like, oh, Kenneth Copeland. Oh, Joe, Joe Osteen. Joe Osteen. That's another one. They're not preaching the word. And it's against the Lord. What I recommend, you guys, folks, is to read the word. Because the word will set you free. Stop living in the flesh. Three things, and I'll end it. Three things. World of the flesh. What is that? Right now. Right here. World of the flesh. Right? Fleshly things. Pleasure. Right? Undo pleasure. Pleasure before God. Oh, I gotta go watch a football game. I can't come to church. Oh, I gotta do this. I can't come to church. Right? So, where, so where's God in your life? The placement is, is, is separate. It's not true. Correct? Amen? Okay? So I ask you to read the Word. Know the Word. Immerse yourself in the Word so you're not deceived. How can Jesus get stuff wrong? He walked the planet 2,500 years ago. How did He get it wrong? He talked about today. He talked about then and in between. He knew that this was going to happen. Listen, people in this world will follow people right to the gates of hell. I'm telling you that. I'm going to warn you right now that they will follow a person right to the gates of hell. Now listen, if you're a good person, that don't mean nothing. People, if you say, well, you know what, Pastor John, I'm a good person. You know, I pay my taxes. You know, I help my neighbor out from time to time. You know, literally, I'm a, I'm a good person. Okay. By whose standards? Your standards? Wow. So you're going to heaven because of your standards, because you just called yourself a good person. Wow. Oh, but, but Pastor John, I... I was, I was watching Joel Osteen, and he says, I would inherit the kingdom of God because I'm a good person. Really? Really? It's not what it says here. I can't find it. I can't find anything. And I, I, I read the Bible every day. I study every day. I can't find it says, well, let's see. But what, what does 2 Peter say? Oh, Matthew 7. Uh, man, uh, Jeremiah 8. Oh, Joshua 9. It doesn't say if I'm a good person, I'm going to inherit the kingdom of God. It doesn't say that. Well, well let me find the sinner's prayer because I, I know a couple years ago I went, I went to church and, and, uh, and uh, man, I, uh, I said the sinner's prayer. Let's find it in the Bible. It doesn't exist, people. It doesn't exist. But you see what's taught? This is what's taught. This is what's taught right now. Don't be deceived. That's not my word. It's Jesus' word. Do not be deceived. Now let, me, let me tell you something else. One more time. The music we listen to. The music we listen to is apparent. Okay? Now I'm not going to go into what Hill, Hillsong says, or Bethel says, or... Uh, uh, Elevation Church says, okay, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to warrant you this. 
Just because somebody stands up there and says glory, 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 a million times, does it mean it's the gospel? Okay, you use the word called glory. You can look it up in Webster's Dictionary. Know what you are praising and worshiping. That's another one. Don't just take for, take for granted, oh, it's a Christian church, and I'll follow these, these songs. Rap music in, in Christianity has no place in that. Did you know that Lucifer, who was Lucifer, is now, now Satan, was also named the Morning Star, but also he was the cherub that was in charge of worshiping. He was the cherub, the main cherub, that also handled music in heaven. So he knows how to manipulate music. Just because you have a, 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 a rhythm, and all of a sudden it's like, only Jesus, only Jesus, only Jesus, doesn't mean it's true. Okay? When you worship God, you need to be reverent. What does reverent mean? Right? Reverent. Reverent. Music needs to be reverent too. That's another falsification in today's world. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter how many people you bring in. It's how you do it the correct way. Again, read the word in. Read the Word and live your life according to the Word. One and two. One and two. Read the Word and number two, your fruits of how you walk. How you walk in life. Right? Don't be that Christian just by profession, by not, but not by practice. Not from profession, because what I say, but practice. Guys, you only get one shot at this. I'm actually pleading with you again. Every Saturday, I plead with you, right? Amen? I plead with you. Whether my message is repentance or conversion or whatever I'm talking about, Romans 1, whatever. It's repentance. It, it's, it's the fruits. It's the one and two. And I plead with you to read the Bible. Another thing, I want you guys to also help the younger generation. Vanessa, you're responsible. You're responsible. You're responsible. You're responsible for Al Alondra. You're responsible. At the end of time, Jesus comes and you have the answer to the white throne of judgment, you will be judged on what you did do and what you didn't do. Just remember that. Because God will say, Lauren, did you help your daughter come to me? And if you say yes, my Lord, going to go to Gabriel and say, Gabriel, see, everything's, everything's recorded on what we do in this, in this side of eternity. Everything. But you know what the, the gift and grace of faith is? Is that Jesus came and died for us, so that recording gets thrown away. It gets thrown away. It's gone. There's no, there's no recording. If you confess, convert, and repent. You see, repentance means move into another direction. No, you can confess all you want. Correct? You can confess all you want. Oh, I I slept around on my wife. She doesn't know it's a secret sin. Or I viewed pornography. She doesn't know it's a secret sin. Right? I die the next hour. That's it. Fine. Jesus knows everything about us. Everything. Secret sins and all. Okay? Walk your walk. Number two. Walk your walk. Don't let anybody ever, ever deter you from your path. Don't compromise, in, in, in other words. Don't compromise. Stay on the path. Read the word. Amen? Bow your heads. Jesus, Lord, King of the universe, thank you for giving me some passion this morning.
conviction on your agenda this morning, Lord. This is your gospel, Lord. Second Peter, Lord, Matthew 23 is all your word in infinity. Thank you for allowing me to preach the Christian tenets, Lord, in your name. Please help me to affect everyone here and afar. Also, Lord, help me and guide me at 4 o'clock with Pastor Kimmy's brand new church. And help me to be an example with the other people that I meet this afternoon. Help me to be humble and gentle and kind, Lord, and at the same time, strong and firm in your word as I move into your preaching. Lord, Lord I'm honored that I'm selected here, Lord, to be a remnant of your word in the gospel of Christ. I thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Forgive my sins, Lord, because I am a sinner as well. Guide me, convert me, help me, walk with me. Help everyone here. They learn the word, Lord. And they grow in your faith, in your word, and in the fruits of their walk. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. Amen.